but he goes by the name Akrima, and he is a senior planner for the Somali terrorist group known as Al-Shabaab. He will now also be known as the one who got away from SEAL Team 6, which failed to capture him in a pre-dawn raid. The SEALs came out of the Indian Ocean in small boats, but were spotted as they moved toward the seaside compound where they believed Akrima lived. A firefight broke out. With the element of surprise gone, the SEALs had lost their chance to take him alive. The SEAL commander could have called in an airstrike in an attempt to kill Akrima, but there were too many civilians, including children, in the compound. Instead, he ordered his men to withdraw back to their boats and to a Navy ship offshore. There were no casualties among the SEALs. One or two of Akrima's men are believed to have been killed or wounded. All right, folks, welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, that's from uh, the CBS Evening News uh, last night. Um, we're talking about the uh, mission by our Navy SEALs. We're told SEAL Team 6. I don't know why we're told that, but we are told that. Uh, and we're also told, and, and we're told this by our military, that the SEALs retreated in a mission that has been planned for some time. The SEALs were were led to believe, taken by surprise, that there were so many civilians, including children, present at the facility, at the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, um, the villa, where they were trying to get their target, um, a senior planner for the Somali terror group known as Al-Shabaab, who, among other things, perpetrated the, uh, the mall attack in Kenya. Let's listen to the final uh, soundbite here on this uh, CBS report on that, uh, that uh, Navy SEAL uh, attack that uh, was called off, basically, in, in midstream. Here's cut number 25. The aborted raid came just two weeks after al-Shabaab launched the attack on the Westgate shopping mall in Nairobi, Kenya. But officials said the operation to snatch a crema had been in the works long before that. Officials briefed on the operation said the SEAL commander made the right call in deciding to withdraw. The SEALs had not expected to find so many women and children, in effect, human shields, inside the compound. All right. Um, that was David Martin, uh, CBS News. Joining us right now is Scott Taylor, eight years, a Navy SEAL, and uh, he is now president of OPSEC. And OPSEC is a nonpartisan grassroots advocacy organization which is focused on protecting U.S. Special Operations Forces and national intelligence assets. Uh, hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for coming on. I do appreciate it. All right. E explain. F first, let me ask you a one question. Uh, there was sure. a lot of criticism and, and uh, parents of uh, some SEALs who have been deceased uh, who were um, uh, victims on that, uh, that plane crash that took place on a Navy SEAL operation after they got bin Laden. Uh, some, some people have said and have questioned, and so do I, why do we need to know it was Navy uh, SEAL Team 6? I mean, do, are we not getting too much information from our government, from our military, to put out there to our, uh, the world, including our enemies, as to who did what and exactly how we did it? Yeah, I mean, I, I could not agree more with you. Um, there's, no reason, there's no reason that you should know what specific unit uh, was on a specific operation, whether it was in Somalia or Libya or anywhere else for that matter, because all they continue to do is put a potential target on folks back. Uh, it's not too hard to put two and two together and figure out where these folks live or where their families live or where their kids go to school. So I, I think that the more that we talk about, it, the more that we endanger lives, and um, it's tra that's it's a shame, basically. All right, so I'm I'm not crazy. All right, now next. Um, I, I, in the report that I that I just played, and the reason that they gave, and this is the military speaking, um, they called off their raid or they retreated in Somalia after they came upon the villa that apparently this this attack had been in place or in the planning stages way before the mall attack in Kenya. It's been in, in place for some time in the planning stages for some time. They retreated when they realized or saw that there were too many human shields, too many children and women, especially children. And I'm thinking. That's what our SEALs do, number one. And then I'm thinking, here again. We've now told every one of our enemies that if you're like Osama bin Laden or a leader of a terrorist group and you think that one day the U.S. might be coming for you, make sure you surround yourself with kids and women. I mean, I, 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 am I out of my mind or, is, or are they nuts? No, you're not. I mean, you know, we've, been, we've been preaching about this <laughs> for 
several years now with the Obama administration with their consistent release of national security secrets and tactics and TTPs and all this stuff. And, and I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to realize. And I'm not. I'm not a rocket you know, scientist. <laughs> and, and me either. But if, if I know exactly what my opponents are going to do, then I'm going to act in anticipation of what they're going to do. So, uh, it, again, you're, you're certainly not crazy, and it's something that we've been criticizing this administration for for years now. And, and why do you think they do this? Man, I, I, I mean, I know I, you're nonpartisan. You know, but, but I, I, I have no idea. Um, you know, you, you keep seeing the, the, the news reports. It's a senior official who's given the information. And, and uh, you know, qu- quite frankly, my own personal opinion is the two operations that, that were just conducted were a political. Just like the wading in about the, you know, changing the name of the Redskins. I think it's political to, to provide a smoke screen for what the real issues are that are you know, pissing people off in, in, in the nation, like the government shut down and, and his refusal to negotiate and all that stuff. But, but I think that these things, and that's unfortunate because, and that's a strong statement, which means that he would risk lives to, uh, to provide a political smoke screen, which is not unprecedented, of course, with, with world leaders uh, in, throughout history. But... I just think it's a tragedy. It's something that shouldn't be happening. We're talking to uh, Scott Taylor, a Navy SEAL for eight years, now president of OPSEC here on the uh, Steve Malsberg Show. You're just back from Egypt, correct? Yes. Yeah, I just, we just got back. I was with the um, Westminster Institute, a, a think tank out of D.C., on a delegation, to, and we met with all the senior military officials in, in, uh, in Egypt, the Christian Coptic Pope, the youth revolutionaries, the Constitutional Committee, the... Um, Head of the Evangelicals, Chamber of Commerce, all kinds of folks. It was a, it was a fascinating trip, very eye-opening, uh, and I'm very happy to have gone on it. Were you with my buddy Paul Vallely, General Vallely? I was with the general. There you go. There. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The general was there, and uh, we had a really good group of uh, former senior military and, and then academics as well. And uh, it, was, it was a very interesting uh, thing, and it, it sort of underscored my own opinion that the, uh, the administration's foreign policy is uh, – it's kind of backwards where we're sort of catering to people who don't like us and then we're alienating the people who have had our backs for a long time. Right, right, before I let you go, Scott, just just tell me what how much does this hamstring the uh, the, the the special ops forces, the, the SEALs, when again, when all this information is given out, our enemies now know why we retreated. Uh, they now know apparently that if this holds, that if they surround themselves with the quote unquote human shields, we will retreat. We will not, uh, you know, go after the target any longer. We'll back up. Um, SEAL Team Six, you know, naming the teams by name. Uh, h- how much does this hamper? future operations and how much danger does it put uh the current members of let's say seal team six in well i think that um you know i have the utmost confidence in my peers for sure that they need to change tactics they will however that takes a little a while to reverberate throughout special ops community as far as changing tactics go but again i'll foot stomp on the fact that anytime you give out uh, tactics and TP, TTPs, and you name the specific unit who conducted specific operations, you potentially put their lives in danger and other folks' lives in danger as well, too. So I, I think that the, you know, what, what, seen, what you've seen consistently over the past few years is, is this happening, and it's, it's a tragedy, and it certainly pisses off everybody in special operations and their families. Has that, was that always the um, – I know it's mission by mission, I would imagine, but has that always been uh, – is it a rule of thumb – that if we get to a place and our target, you know, there's, there, it's a house full of kids or, you know, a house full of families, uh, yet we have a high-level target that we're going after, is it, is it, I guess it's left up to the commander on the, on the scene, and it's his call, if I'm correct. But if that is the case, uh, what is the usual call in that, resp- in that circumstance? Well, I'm certainly not going to talk about tactics. I apologize. But, no, that's um, okay. Maybe. But, I'm, but I, I'm sorry I asked you. Maybe. Go no, ahead. No, it's okay. But, but I will say that, um, you know, it's, it, I, like I said, I had the utmost confidence in my peers and, and that the, whatever the, the call that the commander made on the ground at the time, you know, looking through his eyes was, was probably the right one. So I, I'll just okay, I'll fair just, enough. I'll just say that. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't want to try to pressure you into doing something that we've already criticized the administration for doing. I was just curious if you noticed a, a sea change in policy, but that, that's fine. Your answer will suffice. Thank you very much, Scott. We really appreciate your, your service and your time with us today. Thank you for having me. Take care. My pleasure. Scott Taylor, ladies and gentlemen, former Navy SEAL for eight years and now president of uh, OPSEC, 
which uh, basically looks out for the well-being of uh, our special ops forces, our Navy SEALs around the world. If you care to weigh in, please do. 855-777-9660-855-777-9660. On this issue, do you expect our Navy SEALs to retreat because there's a lot of kids in the villa where we're going after a high target. And also, if you want to weigh in on the conversation that unfortunately uh, it ended too soon with, uh, with Gloria Allred because we were up against a hard break, uh, if you envision yourself in the situation of that van driver or the SUV driver with his family in the car on the West Side Highway and you're surrounded and you feel threatened, are you going to peel out even if it means you might hit somebody? Or are you, and if you do hit somebody in that situation, as Gloria said, the law requires you to do, would you get out of the vehicle and try to tend to the injured motorcycle rider? Or would you be afraid you'd get beaten to a pulp, which eventually happened to the driver anyway? 855-777-9660 right here on the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.